This is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum versus AEW Dynamite. This is from May. 19th, 2021, a show that really got them back into form. I thought last week's show was uh, in many ways kind of a step backwards, but this one definitely a step forward. Um, the entire show used to promote basically the next pay-per-view or next week's Dynamite. Um, really good moves forward. I love that they're giving different people that we haven't seen promo time. Um, some things it feels like they're shoehorning in, but that's uh, the creative process, isn't it? Overall, though, really solid matches throughout the night, and we had six of them, not five, um, which I thought was good to return to that basic standard. Um, the women really took up the middle of the card um, with two matches and a number of segments. Um, so it's just a good look all around. That's my general take. Let's break down the individual matches and segments. So we open with uh, Christian Cage against Matt Seidel. Perfectly serviceable match. Christian Cage wins with the kill switch. Then Ricky Starks. It's nice to see them, in spite of injury, making him uh, like a prominent presence. He comes out, cuts his promo, an excuse for Team Taz to come in and assault both Matt Seidel and uh, Christian Cage. Adam Page comes in, um, play, trying to play that hero role, but Team Taz eventually beats them all down. And uh, we run down the card. And so that's our conflict between Adam Page and Brian Cage, which we're going to see at the pay-per-view, right? Uh, they run down this card. Um, Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. in particular cut a really good promo in there, there with Julia Hart. Really makes the team look like uh, something much more significant, if I'm being honest. But it's a good promo. We go to commercial. Uh, we come back. We get some words from Mox and Eddie. <laughs> Eddie Kingston, I got to say, he said very little, but what he said was incredibly funny. Just as like, they're rappers. <laughs> I just, I really went for it. Um, let Mox carry most of that promo. And the acclaimed um, had a good promo of their own, but then their battle rap was just incredibly brutal. It felt incredibly personal. The line about oral sessions with Moxley's wife it really... Um, really put an extra something, put a little mustard on this match. I mean, it was a foregone conclusion. You knew Moxley and Eddie Kingston were going to win, but definitely gave a claim their moments. Um, wheelbarrow into the DDT for John Moxley to score the win. Then we had Alex Marvez talking to Jericho, who said how he's going to bring up, you know, um, we're going to answer the uh, challenge later on. And he and Dean Malenko have a funny moment where, you know, Dean Malenko goes, you still have four more moves than me, um, which popped me a great deal, of course. Um, Tony's there with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Um, the long and short of it is Sting and Darby Allen attack them. So now we have a match set for the pay-per-view as well. And Dark Order also blocking the exit for uh, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky at one point was interesting. They keep trying to find ways to shoehorn the Dark Order in. They really do. Uh, but no Matt Hardy or his group were a part of Dynamite, so really the Dark Order was not left with a lot to do here. Um, Pinnacle uh, and MJF are sitting at a table having lunch. Boy, that Sean Spears is a jerk, eh? <laughs> what he did to that poor guy trying to bring him drinks. Holy moly. Uh, the long and short of it is... Uh, MJF is mad, and he wants to know what their answer is going to be, which we'll find out later. Third match, a Rebel against Hikaru Shida. Um, one big black mark on this match was the commentators droning on and on and on and on, just talking about a bunch of... I can't even remember what they're talking about, but completely missing the story of Hikaru Shida pulling out a glove to do um, Britt Baker's move onto Rebel, which led to shenanigans, Rebel hitting uh, Hikaru Shida with a crutch and all this kind of stuff. Um, and the commentators were just not on it. It made me think, God, are they even watching the match? Match or they just kind of talk in their stuff. It was definitely the low moment commentary-wise on the show. Um, 
at the end of the day, Hikaru Shida continued to work on that leg in brutal fashion and then won with the uh, stretch muffler. Again, uh, one of these things about AEW, um, you know, we had a leg getting worked on in brutal fashion, and then you had that in the very next match with Serena Deeb and Red Velvet. These are the things they have to pick up on. These are the things that they have to catch. Um, is it the end of the world? No, but it does show cracks in the foundation. Uh, they got to get better at that stuff, man. They just do. Um, we see Kenny Omega and Don Callis backstage with Orange Cassidy. Apparently, this is after his match last week. And basically, they give him a bunch of paperwork to say, hey, you know, you can have your title match later on. Why don't you just bow out of the three-way dance at the pay-per-view? So that's going to be a little bit of intrigue as Orange is going to give his answer next week, apparently. Commercial. We come back, inner circle. They give their answer. Of course, we're going to accept the match. Great. Um, Jade Cargill, uh, another run-in with the lawyer um, who says, no, I want to work for you and you don't work for me. And she tells him to leave because her segment has gotten interrupted yet again. Hmm. Definitely left me very flat. Jade Cargill at this point should just be shining. And this angle, if you want to call it that with the managers, has definitely taken away from her. It's definitely taken away. Um, match number four, Red Velvet against Serena Deep. A really fantastic match. The Red Velvet seemed like she was just wore out and tore up by the end. But she gutted through it. Maybe it was a combination of good selling and a legitimately being beat up and exhausted. Um, that Serena Deeb, when she went to smash the knee repeatedly before reapplying her serenity lock to get the tap out, Serena Deeb definitely looked like a woman possessed defending her world title. That's for sure. And the ring rust really wasn't there. She looked good. Red Velvet carried herself amicably through the match. Red Velvet has shown that she can, she can wrestle in a big match for sure. Um, Tony's there talking to Pac. Pac basically going like, don't bet against me. Cool. Commercial. We come back. Austin Gunn with Arn and Cody against Anthony Agogo. Um, the confusion over whether the blood on Anthony Agogo's face was from Austin or not. Again, another low point for the commentary. They just... Didn't they just don't seem to be on it? But Anthony and Gogo with those two gut shots, Austin bleeding from the mouth from them, and then that pop up punch to the face to lay him out. Austin Gunn was sent here to put Anthony and Gogo over in any which way he could, and did absolutely that. But when you look at it, so out of six matches, we have um, two matches. Well, really three or four or five matches. Almost every match was a foregone conclusion match. Um, not the biggest of deals. That's what this show is for. It's an infomercial for the pay-per-view after all. But it is interesting to note when you have all six matches are easily predictable. And two of them you can just call out-and-out -out squashes out of six uh, it's a little troubling, but we'll see what the ratings say. Um, you can, ever, I'm not saying every Dynamite show has to be knocking it out of the park. In fact, they shouldn't. This is the kind of show that they need once in a while. We'll just see if they've uh, set expectations too high for their audience. We shall see. Um, Alex is talking to SCU. I, I thought this was really wonderful. Uh, Daniels whispers to Kaz and then leaves, and you're wondering what he said. And Kaz doesn't really let you know either, except to say that he's coming after. He blames all of the um, elite for this. So he's coming for him. Love it. During the commercial break, Sammy G busts out his cards. Nice. It's good to see that return here and there. Uh, Miro cuts a promo. It's very good. Lance Archer cuts a promo. It's very good. And then they battle back and forth on the microphone and really put a lot of weight on their monster fight that they're going to have at the uh, paper for you. And then finally, Varsity Blondes. This is the best that they have looked. The Young Bucks definitely know how to carry a team through. But they looked really good. And kudos to Brian Pillman, who is really on his game. And the spots with Julia Hart, I thought, were great. As she pointed something out to the referee, so she got him caught. Uh, but then she had to eat the spray to the eyes as well. And at the end, the Young Bucks slapped on that sharpshooter again. Uh, then Pillman had to take the X-Factor over the rope. 
um, as he was caught in the sharpshooter and eventually had to tap out. But then Mox and Eddie show up, whip the bucks, take their shoes. So a perfectly serviceable dynamite. You got to have these shows once in a while. But some of the little troubling things that I talked about definitely need to be cleaned up. This has been Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling.